Ladies and gentlemen, I know I need a haircut, but we are at Lowe's. Oh, Home Depot, just kidding. <laughs> What is pillow paint? Is pillow paint absolutely necessary? In this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between pillow paint, base paint, house paint. Also, I will show you how to create your own pillow paint without house paint. Once again, this is a comparison video. I hope you enjoyed it because it was a labor of love and I'm tired now, bye. Pillow paint shopping can get overwhelming very quickly. Couple things, you want to find something that has a satin eggshell or semi-gloss finish. I don't particularly like super high gloss, but I really don't like flat paint either. So let's debunk a few myths regarding pillow paint. Myth number one, house paint is not required for any acrylic pour. Yeah. It's not necessary. We like to use it, but we don't absolutely need it. You don't absolutely need to go and purchase house paint. The term pillow paint has become very popular a lot of this we attribute to the Shelley Bloom technique and its birth by Shelley Crothers. So with that, many people are now using the term pillow paint, base paint, and house paint interchangeably. And what that does for the beginner in fluid art is just, well, overwhelms them and confuses them. Pillow paint is generally house paint, which is latex based. And a latex uh, based paint is typically more spongier um, and thicker than your regular acrylic paint. While this paint is water based, it is thicker, which provides that pillow idea. The thickness of the house paint allows artists like myself to um, blow into our paints, but also swipe our colors across and not going through to the canvas. So basically it gives more cushion for the pushing. Got it. The term base paint generally refers to paint which allows the paint on top to move more favorably for the artist. For example, when you put paint on your substrate which is usually a canvas it will break the surface tension okay between the paint and the canvas and allows the paint that you place on top of the base paint to move more freely now if you have watched my million of videos on straight pores ring pores all that good stuff you will see that i start out with a little bit of paint i pour my straight pour on top of it, and then I start to move the paint around and create a design. In that, once I've poured it, I will generally have some areas around my painting that have not been painted. So I will use more base paint to cover that area once again to break that surface tension and keep those paints moving. Base, can, base paint can be made from any type of concoction, any mixture. It does not have to be made with house paint, okay? All right, so if you're still sold on using house paint, I want to tell you, purchasing house paint is like purchasing an experiment. All of these house paints out there are different. I cannot tell you what type of reaction each one will give your paint. However... I am going to give you some tips on what make up a great house paint to use for your pillow, okay? All right, so we're back from Home Depot, brand new. You can see the dust still on the canister, okay? Brand new can. Now, you can um, turn your can 
if it's been sitting for a long time, we want to try to mix it up as much as possible uh, before we open it. Now, I'm not promising that this is going to really mix anything if your paints have been sitting a very long time, but just some gentle uh, turns won't add any additional bubbles to your paint. Okay, but you are going to need to stir this up on your own. Once again, I always advise never to get the people at the paint stores to stir this up because depending on the brand, you may have bubbles forever. It may take a very long time for the paint to settle and to remove those bubbles from your pillow paint. So we've used our paint key and... So this paint probably hasn't been sitting very long on the shelf. A lot of times you will have a clearish, yellowish mixture on top. Never pour that out, y'all. That is the components to make the paint paint. All right. So even if it appears to be well mixed, we need to mix it ourselves. So I want to take my stir stick and I'm just going to stick it in. And I want to do some slow rotations of my paint to get it really mixed well. If there is um, some clear on top, you're gonna have to lift it up to kind of incorporate that paint. But I normally spend five or so minutes mixing my paint and it's good. Once I do that, I'm good to go. I don't ever really remix it unless it's been sitting for a long time. You'll see I'll put my plastic chute on here for me to pour it out and it may sit for a couple of days, but it doesn't, um, nothing really happens to my paint. Um, as long as it's not sitting, if it's more than a week or two, you probably need to give it a good stir. Nothing has been added to my paint. So this is straight from the can. So you can see it's creamy and dreamy. That's what we want. It leaves a mound on a mound and about a two to two, two to two and a half second trace. Could you thin this? You could, but for most people, this is fine, especially if you're doing blooms or swipes. All right, I'm taking some of this out for a drip test that we're gonna, getting ready to conduct. So before we do our drip test, we're going to create our own pillow paint today using these ingredients. So we will utilize Flood Floetrol and Elmer's glue and water to create our, or our pillow paint. Um, also, we're going to use some white paint. So these are all different brands. Um, most of this is found in the U.S. I'm not sure where else this is available, but... You can use any type of student grade um, white paint. Now, just like we were in the store, there are all different kinds. I cannot guarantee that one will give you a reaction that the other won't. But I have used all, the, all of these, okay? So I will use this paint in conjunction with my titanium white paint by Amsterdam, which is of higher quality to create my pillow paint. These are going to be less pigmented and cost uh, per ounce is going to be much cheaper. Okay. However, your higher grade acrylic paints like your Goldens and your Liquitex, all that good stuff is going to have more binder and more pigment. So you need a healthy combination of the two to make sure that your pillow is not too watery um, and that your pigments are not stretched too thin or you may get some flocculation or other kind of weird things going on in your painting. All right, so all of these cups are two ounces. So let's mix up our glue and American Floetrol first. I'm going to have to strain that for the gloops that came out. Okay. This is Elmer's Glue All. I 
I like to mix my water last because you can play with the ratios a bit. All right. And we want to make this a home, a mixture first. So. Look at all those gloops. All right. And we're going to add our glue. And we want to stir this up. And it is very thin. So we're going to set this to the side. Now we're going to add our paint. Okay. Our white paint. I'm just going to use the Blick acrylic this time. I'm going to add one full part of our student grade paint. And I like to stir it every part of the process to go ahead and get it mixed in um, to create one mixture. So I'm going to go ahead and Stir, 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 ba bum ba bum ba. Stir, 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 ba bum ba bum ba. Stir your stir stick. Shake your stir stick. So you can see when we add the paint, it gets nice and thick. Okay, but we still need to add some of our better quality paint. So then you're going to do a half part. And I know this might be a little confusing. Most of my recipes are pretty simple, but this one is a little more complicated for lack of better words, but in the description, I've outlined it for you, okay? So we're taking a half part and we're gonna add that in as well. All right, do our song again. Stir, 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 ba bum bum ba bum ba. Stir, 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 ba bum bum. Stir your stir stick. Shake your stir stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, consistencies don't exactly have to match that of the pillow, but I want it to be close. But you can see that it is creamy and dreamy. It's thick. All right, and should serve as a good pillow. Now, because we are using products like Flood Floetrol, your Elmer's glue, these are not conventional items that are found in paints. This conversation doubles over for pouring medium as well, which I'm going to do a video on, but you will see that we use these products in pouring medium, but these are not conventional uses of the product, okay? Okay. All right, friend, follow me here. So with that, these products dry a matte finish. The Flood Flow Trial is a paint extender, so it allows you to extend the paint. It does not add any qualities or benefits to the paint per se, other than making it fluid if we were talking about a pouring medium. But right now we're talking about a pillow. OK, so we utilize these things for their thickness and their ability to work with our paints. So we need to add some gloss back into our paints for stretchability. Also, in my helpful tip section, you will see that I do not like to use flat paint okay so we're going to use any of our gloss products you can use 
the Josiah gloss, which is pop popular, the polycrylic, the Pebio, any pouring medium that is a glossy finish. So your liquid text, gold, and all that good stuff, you can utilize in this. We just need to add some of the sheen back into the paint to help us with stretching and drying. Now, depending on your recipe, is going to kind of depend on how much you should use. Um, there is not really an exact measurement for this, so I'm just going to give you what I would guess to make to be about an ounce in this cup. And we're going to mix that in. Mix it real good. All right, so it's been 24 hours and... I'm taking this off. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, do not add any water until after you have mixed your paint and let it set. All right. So now we're taking our paint. And it has thickened up a bit. I covered this, but I left some I left it sitting like this because I do want. It wants the paint to thicken up. You can also see that now my stick sticks up a lot longer in the paint here. Let's see. Okay. It stands up. And we have a good consistency. So it has thickened up just a little bit. Now, water is going to come into play after you have an idea of how you want your paints to be. The first time, I would suggest pouring without the water or just adding a little bit because it's much easier to add water than it is to take water away. So I'm just gonna add not eat, just, I mean, just a touch of water. Just to thin it just a little bit. I'd rather it be too thick than too thin. Like I said, it's easier to adjust that way. And now we're ready to do our drip test. All right, so we're going to do a drip test just to see how these paints flow differently from each other. All right, so this is our multi-pro. And this is our paint mixture that we've made. I think there's just a little more. Okay, I have to move quickly, but I want to take you guys down. You see how... There's like a bubble. That's what we want. Okay, you can see there's barely any difference. That's what we want in a pillow because that allows us to blow into it or swipe it and us not go all the way through the paint. So get into it real close. <laughs> Look at there. All right, let's do our drip test before our paint dries. Okay, so you can see that our paints are very similar. I still think I had just a little bit more of this, but the drip test gives you a really good indication of about how thick you want your paints. Um, you can give a little, it could be a little thicker, a little thinner. I don't think it's going to really matter. Um, but you can see that it did take a while for gravity to kick in and do its job. <laughs> so it's been two days. And tell me this, this does not look just like our pillow paint from the can. Thick and creamy and dreamy. All right. 
So let's get the stage set up, if you will. All right, so many of you asked me about this product. Um, you can get this at Home Depot. And this is my spout, which I put here and pour my paint out of. It is amazing. Um, and if you don't know, peeling dried paint is oddly satisfying. If I can get it out. Now, you really want to make sure that the lid is on good. It can really deceive you. And I will tell you the first couple times you pour, you want to hold this on to make sure that it is secure. It wouldn't hurt to also tape it. Just a warning to the wise. All right, so this is not a paint mixing video. However, I will link it in the description how I mix my paints, my paints, my very best recipe that works tried and true. Um, but this is about a three to one ratio. And so you can see that the paint is uh, creamy and it leaves a nice mound on a mound, but it is still fluid. All right, these are, all right. All right, I'm going to mix up some fresh cell activator. I have plenty of videos on this. I don't want this video to be an hour long, so I'm speeding it up as I go through it. looks very similar um, it takes a little longer for it to settle This is my cell activator. Ooh, that was probably way too much. Okay, so we spread it out and we're getting a few small cells. That's a good sign. Really bad blow, but that's not what we're going for. We're wanting to see the difference in the reaction, okay? So that is the pillow paint. You see how thick it is and how I blew a lot and the pillow did not pop through, okay? That's what we want. Now let's see if we can get that same reaction with our, um, with our acrylic paint.
All right. Once again, another horrible blow. That's fine. Um, blowing doesn't have to be perfect. But look, this pillow is holding up very well. This is made from our acrylic paints, okay? Now, let's put this on a, these on a spinner and spin them out to see if you can tell the difference. Okay, really pretty. Wish I had um, given some effort in blowing this. Look how gorgeous that is. Look how gorgeous that is. Let's spin again. My paint was getting ready to start splattering everywhere. And once again, we're not going for this gorgeous bloom that we're gonna sell. This is an experiment, but look, gorgeous, okay? This is actually really pretty. Now, we're going to take our second painting here. And we're going to do the same. All right, and it's spreading out nicely. And look what this gorgeous pillow has allowed us to do. You cannot tell that this was made with regular acrylic paint, glue, and Floetrol. Okay, let's spin again. Look at that, y'all. Gorgeous. All right, so we have a very similar reaction to both. I mean, these look like pairs and sisters, and you can see that the definition is the same. Um, the yellow has given us a little bit more of a halo effect, and that could be um, I put more yellow down or I've done more spinning, which I think I have done a little more spinning on this piece right here but other than that the bloom looks the same it looks the same all right so if you watch my channel you have to know we're not done yet okay we are not done yet so in addition to our bloom we're also going to do a swipe okay we want to see if there are any differences in swiping our paints um if they react differently Wow, we look at that reaction, friends. Oh, look at that gorgeous gradient change. My gosh. Pangasm. All right, let's let this sit here and do our next painting and then see the two together before we spin or tilt anything off. So we need to move quick.
All right. Let's do this. I need to kind of turn it so I can get it at a good angle for me. I am a lefty. Shout out to all the left-handed people watching. So we should get a very similar reaction because the top paint hasn't changed, but we want to see if the acrylic paint reacts differently. And look, it is forming beautifully just like our other painting. More yellow in this piece, and that's fine. Just look at that. Whew. Look at that. Mixing in with our acrylic paint. Given those ghosty cells, I just love it. So friends, can you tell the difference in using house paint and pillow paint? I'll let you be the judge. All right, let's finish these up real quick, friends. Do some tilting. So um, I wanna keep a lot of the yellow, but I need to stretch, so. And you can see it's nice and thick. Let's go back. Oh my goodness, look at that. How pretty it is. Go to that corner. Come back. And my goal is to keep some of that white. gorgeous you know I really wanted to spin these but I wanted to show you guys that you can spin and tilt um, and I'm also not a one trick pony <laughs> now you can see my pillow paint or my house paint is actually moving a little bit faster and that's because we let the paint sit for so long and you know Elmer's glue is a it's not a painting product, so that is going to thicken up your paints um, if you're using a glue. And we'll get that corner, and we're going to call these done. Oh, I love those small cells at the bottom. What difference, baby? What difference? Look at there. So, friends, you do not have to go and find the perfect house paint. If if house paint is not available in your country um, or you're having a hard time, experiment with making your own. I'm going to give you some helpful tips to making your own pillow paint. Let's get in for a close up. It's gorgeous. This is our house paint. And you can see I've done a lot of stretching, so we lost a lot of the small cells, but that's okay. I love the movement here and not a lot of blue. But don't you worry, we have a lot of blue in this one. And this is our paint mixture that we made from acrylic paints and glue and Floetrol. So you can see that uh, we have some pretty good results. And the point more so of this video is to remind you there are options, friends. You don't have to go out and buy every single product that every artist uses. But you can see we had a few issues with the drying. This is the glue. Um, however, you know, this was a reused canvas and that plays a part of the drying process um i definitely can say i don't like using glue solely as a 
pouring medium because I have had drying issues in the past. So I do like to mix up that glue with the Floetrol and a little bit of the gloss medium. However, you can see that the results are still stunning and I encourage you all to give it a try as well. Thanks for watching. Remember, do everything with love. Peace.